Good morning, today's lesson is 7.6. Use algebraic expressions. Our essential question today, how can you use variables and algebraic expressions to solve problems? Sometimes you are missing a number that you need to solve a problem. You can represent a problem like this by writing an algebraic expression in which the variable represents the unknown number. Let's unlock the problem. Raph's flight from Los Angeles to New York took five hours. He wants to know the average speed of the plane in miles per hour. Write an expression to represent the average speed of the plane. Use the variable to represent the unknown quality. So think, the plane's average speed is equal to the distance traveled divided by the time traveled. So use the variable to represent the unknown quantity. So let D represent distance traveled in units of miles. So if that's the case, then we have D, which is the in miles on the top, and then our hours, well right here it says it took five hours, so our hours is gonna be five hours. So we have our distance traveled over time. Raph looks up the distance between Los Angeles and New York on the internet and finds the distance is 2,460 miles. Use this distance to find the average speed of Raph's plane. So we're gonna evaluate the expression for in where the D is, so there's my D. I'm gonna plug in 2,460. So now I'm gonna write my expression. So I'm substituting the 2,460 for D. So now I have 2,460 divided by the five hours, right? Because that's what that means. And when I divide 2,460 2, divided by five, I get 492. So the speed was 492 miles per hour. In the problem on the previous page, the variable represented a single value, the distance in miles between Los Angeles and New York. In other situations, a variable may represent any number in a particular set of numbers, such as the set of positive numbers. Example. Joanne makes and sells candles online. She charges $7 per candle and shipping is $5 per order. Write an expression that Joanne can use to find the total cost of any candle owner. So think, the number of candles a customer buys will vary from order to order, right? So let N represent the number of candles a customer buys, where N is a whole number that is greater than zero. So the cost per order is gonna be the charge per candle, Remember the charge per candle is the $7. I'm gonna move that away. Times the number of candles, right? So how many candles, which is the N, plus that shipping cost. Remember that shipping cost was $5. So an expression for the total candle order is gonna be 7N plus five. So it's the charge per candle, which is $7, times the number of candles, plus the $5 shipping charge. In March, one of Joanne's customers placed an order for four candles. In May, the same customer placed an order for six candles. What was the total charge for both orders? Find the charge in dollars for each order. So first, so we have our March. So remember, it's $7 for every candle plus the five. And in May, again, $7 times how many candles plus five. So we know that we're substituting in March. Right there, there's in March. She bought four candles. So we're going to put in the four. And then in May, it says she bought six candles. So we're gonna put in the six, right? So now if we do the order of operations, we have seven times four, which is 28, plus the five, okay, which is 33. And then in May, we have seven times six, which is 42, plus the $5 for shipping is 47. Now to find the charge for both orders, we're gonna to have to add the 33 and the 47. So 33 plus the 47 gives us 80. So that means for the both months, the total charge was $80. Sharon Show. Louisa read that the highest elevation of Mount Everest is 8,848 meters. She wants to know how much higher Mount Everest is than Mount Rainier. Use the information for problems one and two, so for these two problems. Write an expression to represent the difference in height of the two mountains. Tell what the variable in your expression represents. So we know Mount Everest, but we don't know Rainier. So I can use an R as my variable for that. And if I'm looking at difference, remember difference means subtraction. So I'm going to say 8,848 8, minus the R for Rainier, right? And so you're going to make sure that you write R equals um, Mount Rainier's, okay, in meters, right? All right, the next question says, Louisa researches the highest elevation of Mount Rainier and finds that it is 4,392 meters. 
Use your expression to find the difference in the mountain's heights. So now I'm going to plug in the 4,382 into the R. So I'm going to get 8,848 minus 4,392. And I'm simply going to subtract. 8 minus 2 is 6. I can't take 4 from 9, so I'm going to borrow over here. I'm going to make this be a 7. Okay, and this will be a 14. 14 from 9 is 5. Oops. 14 from 9 is 5. 7 from 3 is 4. And 8 from um, 4 away from 8 is going to be 4. So my answer is going to be 4,456 meters. Okay, the rest you're going to do on your own or with a partner, and I'm always there for you. Good luck.